Welcome to episode 12 of Ask the Grounding Experts, where our experts from ENS Grounding Solutions answer your engineering questions about the world of grounding and earthing. Today, our rolling and rocking David Stocken starts yet another two-part series where he takes us under the microscope and answers the begging question, what is continuity testing? It's all yours, David. All right, welcome back. So we're doing uh, part one of our continuity testing. This will be a two-part series. And uh, this is part of our overall series uh, governing testing. Remember, we've covered four-point testing, three-point testing, and now we're gonna talk about two-point testing. And just as a refresher, remember the four-point test is a soil resistivity and it's a measurement of the earth itself, right? The three-point testing is a measurement of resistance to ground, which is a measurement of the earth to a piece of metal or a metal to a piece of earth. And in this case, in this two-point bit, we're talking about metal to metal. It has nothing to do with the ground whatsoever or dirt or soil. You could do these continuity testings in the International Space Station, right? And, and, they, and they do. Uh, same way with an airplane, right? We're talking about a low fault low impedance fault current path and making sure that things are bonded together effectively so that we provide a nice safe uh, system for people and we want to check that using a continuity testing right so if you recall when we were talking about our four point test we had um, two current probes and we had two voltage probes for a total of four probes in our three-point test, we tied the voltage and current probes together to form three different um, probes. And in this case, we're going to do a two-point, so we're going to tie our other two probes together. So we have a current and a voltage probe and a current and a voltage probe. We're just going to measure the resistance between that. This is what happens with your standard multimeter, like you have your Fluke or whatever, or AMC, a multimeter where you're measuring resistance you have two wires and you have to account for line lead loss this is why we call it a two-point test right you can do four-point uh, testing using continuity as well we can talk about that possibly in the future at a different video um, and then you don't have to account for line lead loss but in this case we're going to talk about a two-point test and what we generally want to do is, in this case, we're going to go back to our substation we've been talking about, our 100 foot by 100 foot substation. And what we're worried about here is our horizontal system. And if you recall, our ground system for our substation, that's 100 foot by 100 foot, it's going to have lots of cross conductors and lots of ground rods. We really have two components in there. We have this horizontal grid, which balances the voltages across our system and then we have these ground rods these vertical ground rods or earth rods and those get rid of the current in our system in this case in the continuity we're trying to measure the horizontal system right in our three-point test we tried to measure the vertical system in this case we're measuring the horizontal system and we want to see if it's got a nice low impedance current path back hopefully to the circuit breaker right so in this case in our substation we want to find a good common reference point and we tie one end of our voltmeter to that common reference point and then we're going to take a long wire and we're going to go out to various points around our substation so we go to the far corner and we take a resistance reading so let's say we have our block house and we've got a ground bar in there that'll be our primary reference point we take our other wire and we run it all the way out to say the corner post of the fence and we measure the resistance of the grounding system from the furthest corner point back to the blockhouse. Now we have a 100 by 100 foot grid and let's say we have a 10 foot on center uh, uh, mesh below it. We've got lots of different paths for that current for that continuity meter for the electrons to get back to our meter. All right, we're gonna inject current, it's gonna go down from the meter 
into our blockhouse master ground bar, down into the ground system and through the grid, back to where we have the other meter tied to at the fence post and up to complete the circuit, right? Signal and a return. As it travels through, it's got lots of possible paths, right? Multiple different parallel paths. So if one wire is broken in that grid, it's going to just route around right around that wire and still tell you you have a nice low impedance path. In fact, if all the wires are broken in that grid except one, you're still going to get a nice low impedance path. But at least you know that that one is tied and does have that low fault current impedance path from that point back. Right? So it's not a perfect analysis. It just gives us one picture and an overall picture that we want to understand about our ground grid. And that is at least from point A to point B, we have that low current fault impedance path. We do have a low path or continuous metallic network to pull those currents off and to balance those voltages. So once we have that reading, we move our wire. We keep our common reference point in the blockhouse. We don't want to move it if we can avoid it. We want to keep a common reference point. So we have a set of numbers that mean something. And we move that reference point around. We start taking measurements at various points around our substation. We measure the doors and the gates. We measure the conductors from the XO of the transformer. We measure the any ground wires that are bonding up posts. Whatever we have, we get the tops of ground rods and make sure that they have a continuous path back. We just check every possible item we can. You can even check the chassis of 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 objects you know the transformer or the switches that may be in the in the yard to make sure that those are bonded right if we find that uh, uh, some metallic object does not have a low impedance fault current path back to the our source we know that that's an area that voltages can form they're going to be higher than the surrounding other metal parts that's a risk for human beings and we want that's exactly what we're looking for when we're doing this is for high resistances right anything above and what you're looking for generally in continuity is something really really low like 0 0.1 ohms or less kind of thing all right we want to have a nice low we want it to be solid metal well connected now uh, there's a number of different methodologies behind this. Some people use AC systems uh, with high current. Some people use DC systems that hold and charge enough, put enough electrons to charge the entire ground system and measure decay rates, what they call an induced polarization system. Uh, we tend to like that technique, but there are numerous techniques out there. The ultimate goal, of course, is just to confirm that you do have a nice low path. Uh, key areas to check are doors, right? Doors and corners, right? These are the things that kill you in a substation, right? That door acts as a, is a, a, particularly if it's a metal door or a gate, is like extending the length of your arm, which makes your touch voltages worse, right? So touch voltages, if you have stretch arm, strong arms, uh, the difference of potential between your hand and feet will be greater, so that's exactly what happens when you grab a metal gate on a substation. You're opening that gate. That gate, maybe it's a, a, a car gate, for example, which might be eight feet long. Uh, you've now extended your arm as if it's eight feet longer, and you've just increased the difference in potential between your hand and your feet. So we want to make sure we have grounding systems that are nice and continuous to protect those personnel that may be opening doors and gates and we want gate jumpers that bond those gates to ground and make sure that those charges cannot form on those gates that people may be touching. So the continuity meter is excellent way of checking to make sure that those gates, um, doors, uh, uh, posts, anything that people can touch, any metallic object that is exposed and touchable is bonded to ground so that we eliminate those differences in potential and protect personnel so they don't get electrocuted, particularly in substations where we have all this high voltage, you know, it's a high voltage environment. It's very dangerous. We would definitely want to check that. By going through your substation and checking multiple points and writing them all down and identifying, and usually what I like to do is put them right on a site plan 
what those readings are, you can actually start to get a pretty good idea if there's broken conductors because you start seeing slightly higher areas, slightly lower areas, and you can start getting a pretty good idea of what the grounding system is like using this two-point methodology and seeing where those conductors are at. And uh, you can sometimes find, you'll be surprised what you find, you find opens where a fault has occurred on a transformer or on a uh, surge arrestor and it's actually melted that ground wire and you get an open and no one was aware of it because it melted below grade where they couldn't see it. Uh, and then you can identify that and uh, get get that ground system repaired. And that's the primary goal of all of these tests, right, is to confirm that our grounding systems are in efficient and effective shape so that we protect personnel from uh, being injured, right? That's the primary goal. Uh, the two-point continuity measurement is a standard resistance test. It requires at least two wires. You can do it with the four-point system. And it's good for measuring that low uh, impedance fault current path, uh, primarily used for break, uh, make sure that our circuit breakers trip in our system. Um, and this concludes uh, part one of our continuity test. Uh, next week, come back and join us. We'll have another video. And we're going to show you how that same clamp-on ground resistance meter can be used to uh, measure continuity as well and in a different manner in a different way and it's actually the combination of our two-point meter and our clamp-on meter is actually really the magic in figuring everything out and we'll hopefully we'll uh, explain that well enough to you so that you can do uh, you can utilize these two two very important tools to check your grounding system thanks for joining us thanks so much for watching if you found this episode helpful, please give us a quick like down below and subscribe to stay up to date on future educational videos we will be publishing. And feel free to post questions or comments below as well. We might even feature your questions in future videos. If you want to learn more about the amazing world of electrical engineering and grounding, be sure to check out our certified online courses at the links in the description below to kickstart your career. We'll see you next time.